Welcome to this week's Epic Epoch Update, where I update you on the four articles that I published this previous week. One of them is in a continuing series within a series. So within the abortions arguments series, where I consider uh, various arguments made in favor of abortion, I published a sub-series which is called uh, pro-abortionists in their own words. So this is pretty much just a series of quotations from people explaining why they support abortion and uh, some really astonishing stuff. Everything from blaming their own abortions on those mean and nasty right-wing politicians to a abortion doctor claiming that uh, basically he's got the okay from God to go ahead and commit baby murder, you know, all kinds of very disturbing stories. And I mean, of course, if you support abortion, especially if you're actively involved in it, uh, you have to be living a very disturbing life and thinking disturbing thoughts on various levels. At least I would hope so. I mean, I would hope that if you're in favor of baby murder, you wouldn't just uh, consider it uh, to be as um, a non-issue as going to the bathroom or just a bodily function or, you know, it's just another thing that you're into. Now, another article was based on an interview, uh, two of them actually, that I saw with the Homeland Security Secretary, Jay Johnson. And uh, his comments about Islam. So, you know, we uh, are being told to have these great national conversations about issues. But, of course, those urgings always come across not in the matter of conversations, but in the matter of we're being lectured to. We're not being told how to think about issues, but we're being told what to think about issues. So, of course, he's being asked about why the Obama administration uh, shies away from referring to Muslim terrorists as Muslim terrorists and um, Islamic terrorists as Islamic terrorists and, you know, using appropriate labels. And basically, he says, well, you know, he travels around the U.S. and he speaks at... Muslim centers and mosques and uh, well Muslims leader leaders tell them hey uh, Islam's a religion of peace and ISIS and other organizations have hijacked Islam well therefore it must be true period and it's astonishing that a person with such great power in our country thinks such shallow thoughts I mean in other words forget Islam's 1500 year history forget Islam anywhere else on the planet, only speak to Muslims who practice a watered-down, westernized form of Islam in a country based upon Judeo-Christian principles, where they're enjoying their safety and freedom and lucrativeness of the society. And when they tell you Islam's about peace and ISIS has hijacked Islam, there you go. They said it, by golly, I believe it, so it must be true. Okay. Um, Now, within the article, I provide a lot of information, such as the fact that, statistically, Islam is responsible for half of the world's uh, religious wars, which, by the way, all religious wars in the past so-claimed 10,000 years makes up less than 7% of all wars so that's another interesting bit of data now the last two articles are uh, connected in a way because I've been doing a lot of research into the serpent seed of Satan theory Uh, and I can't even call it a doctrine because doctrine is good teaching and this stuff is not if you're not aware of the serpent seed of Satan theory, this would be a good good place to start. It claims that Cain is the literal son of Satan because Satan had sex with Eve. Okay, that's the bottom line. And so I'm starting to pick apart various peoples who have made this claim and picked apart their claims, such as a 12-page essay I wrote in response to 
Zen Garcia, who on a popular level is uh, very uh, popular and very well known amongst certain circles. So in this case, one article is about William, William Branham. Uh, he's from decades gone by, and he made this claim, so I considered one of his sermons on it and tried to make some sense of it. And then another one is whether Jesus himself actually claimed that there was a certain seed of Satan when he told his parable of the sower, because that is a very popular parable to which serpent seed of Satan theorists point. So there it is. I'll have more articles coming out on the serpent seed and on abortion and on various and sundry topics, and I hope you'll enjoy them. While you're checking out the info section for the links to these articles, if you would, just open all of them up, even if you don't plan on reading them, and subscribe to my examiner page, because I actually make a few shekels here and there uh, based on traffic and based on the number of subscriptions. So how do you like that deal? You get to support me financially, and it won't cost you one single penny. Okay, thank you.